Hello, I'm Steve and welcome to our channel Patio Heat, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for ideal patio comfort. Check out our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Kindly consider tapping that like button if you find this video useful as it helps others find our channel. Now let's get heating. All right, so here we have this residential application and you can see we have a uh, seating area that's just centrally located within this space here. And then we also have um, up here, we have a fan it's centered into the patio itself. Um, I noticed that there is a, a portion of the property that comes out or the structure that comes out. I have it at 18 inches. It could be a little bit further. That might uh, play into the decision of placement here. And um, door that slides uh, left and right. And let's go ahead and look at the overall dimensions. Overall dimensions I have here, the height of this, the bottom of this beam here is at 10 feet. The bottom of this beam here is at seven. And the top here you can see at uh, 710. These are 10 inch tall beams that I placed there. Overall 20 and then by 20. And then minus that 18 over here for this side. And let's see if there's anything else. We do have this fan in the center. I have this fan set up as a uh, five foot diameter fan. And I think that's about it. So let me turn that off right now. All right, so the, I have two different options. Um, many times people are um, asking me about placing heaters on you know, the inside of these beams to keep a low profile as far as the uh, appearance of um, the product. So let me show that first. Um, this would be my second option and these are 6,000 watt units so I have four of them one here and then two up here and then obviously the one behind us here and let's see there all right so these two are centered within this uh, span this 20 foot span here so 10 foot center from this wall and then these two I had, believe I have them at approximately eight feet apart let's see if I have that listed here yeah so nine feet apart center to center would be the um, placement and let's go ahead and look at the uh, clearance first of all so the issue that we want to make sure we're always meeting is clearances to combustibles and when you place a unit on a vertical surface like this and the manufacturer um, states it on a wall you must have um, 12 inches of clearance above the heater. Um, so with that being said, I think what they are um, talking about is this front clearance here changes and you know is raised up here based on this angle. Now I have these at 30 degree angles and with the structure going up, this should not be an issue. Um, here's the clearance uh, behind the unit. Now they do state that you could use the OEM six inch bracket that comes with the heater when placed it on a vertical surface as long as you maintain that 12 inch clearance above. So just bear that in mind. Um, I'm um, looking at that a little bit differently than maybe the book says. So just keep that in mind when you have your unit inspected. So um, just a, another look at here, you can see that this ray um, at the 30 degree angle is tilting out here and there's no issue with uh, penetration here, although they do state that it can be on a wall. So that would be um, fine behind it. Um, clearance above again, no issues with that in reference to um, the top edge up here. Okay. And now you may or may not wish the 30 degrees. You might want to go even a little bit greater, maybe like 35. And the reason why, we'll just go right here and check out the footprint of heat. Footprint of heat, you can see here, gives you a fairly uh, decent coverage. So these two units here are really um, uh, covering this, these two chairs and then um, a portion of this chair, you can see. This ray does come out about, um, 10 feet from this point out to the center point is a uh, its most ideal footprint of heat or, or penetration of heat. So um, even though you're out this distance, this isn't the most ideal. This is more of, um, it's, its intensity isn't the same as its intensity 10 feet out. So this would be the center point here. So 
Um, would this be comfortable with just two units here? I'd probably say for this space, um, okay. But out here, definitely not. So you definitely need to get additional units in here to cover this space. Now, looking over here, you can see that if your body is sitting here in this chair and your upper torso is, you know, here, um, you're not physically in that ray. So that's why I said maybe the 35 degree tilt would be a little bit better. And um, again, I'm just going to leave that up to the decision of this particular uh, resident here. So. In any case, that's uh, option one. So let's go ahead and look at option two. And option two is my preferred option. My preferred option is to place the units um, strictly above, making sure that we have the 18 inches of clearance below the heater to the fan. Okay. You can see that I do have these at a slight um, angle. I think I have it at five degrees pointed towards the center, and that's just to get more coverage because of the fan diameter I'd like to have these a little bit closer than what they are but I need to have that 18 inches of clearance on the uh, fan blades here so um, that's yeah that's the reason why I have them at that uh, angle and also um, you know I'm meeting the slope of the ceiling here with the brackets I'm using the OEM brackets and you can see with them I am able to um, meet the clearances to combustibles. Now I have these brackets floating in midair so where your brackets are placed you may have to put a block um, between the rafter here um, in order to place the unit uh, in a precise location. Alright so let's go ahead and look at the uh, footprint of heat. I'm going to turn these off. Footprint of heat as you can see here now it is um, mostly uniform throughout this whole entire space and that uniform uniformity it just makes it um, more comfortable and um, more pleasing uh, I would say and um, one thing I didn't mention here we'll just go back to this edge over here let me just put that clearance back on so with that 18 inch um, portion of this property that comes out you know I still are am meeting the uh, 18 inch clearance here but I don't know what the true uh, uh, distance is that this actually protrudes more into this patio so if it's more than 18 inches you can see that we have probably about three or four inches more to go and we may have to move this heater to the left in order to maintain that clearance on the side but again um, you can see that we have a really good coverage here and this is um, very uh, well heated for this space here um, just another note you know if you look at the pad right here, so this pad is actually the same dimension as that 20 by 20, so it's 400 square feet. And um, in that type of uh, environment, um, I would say that uh, if you wanted to heat up the whole entire space, you would need six units total in order to you know heat the whole entire space. But these are infrared um, heaters. They are designed to heat a specific spot. Um, they don't heat air, they just heat mass. And so, yeah, six units to heat the whole entire space, four units just to heat up the seating area that I show here. And then if you were to use like maybe a gas heater, because there was a question I think about uh, possibly using gas heaters here. Um, a 34,000 gas heater, 34,000 BTU that is, gas heater, you would need four units and that would give you pro uh, uh, appropriate amount of uh, heat for this whole footprint so all right well i hope this has helped if you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you would like us to review your plans feel free to send your information to me at designs at patioheat.com so that's designs at patioheat.com and don't forget to hit that like button we do not advertise or monetize with youtube and the only way that we can get uh, referrals from youtube would be through your likes so I thank you for that. Have a great day.